Well, another week has passed. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm quite surprised at this week. We, we had some things happen. And, well, let's talk about those things. And, you know, um, this week in the North football, as first things first, the Wheeling Miners are the newest NAL franchise, number six in the NAL. They'll be franchise number six in the NAL that's currently standing. And this was the move that we kind of all expected. You know, we didn't really, didn't really think, you know, Wheeling was going to go back to the AAF or anything like that, you know. Wheeling was going to move up. Didn't think they were going to have the money for the IFL, but I think, you know, I think the NAL is the right place for them. And this will definitely be a building block with the way that they play. Um, and they also had a playoff game against Jersey, their third game against Jersey this year. And it was just as intense as the first two. Um, Wheeling only, you know, got away with the win late. But they were down for a good chunk of that game. You know, Jersey had no offense, but they had a pick six. They had a kickoff return touchdown. And Wheeling was down, you know, very early on in this game. On the other side of the AL2 playoffs, Peach State, of course, won. I mean, come on now. It's Peach State. You know, the Waco Tornadoes were talking about that trash all season. And, you know, they rightfully got smacked around by the king of by the king of teams who talk shit. And smack and smack around lower tier teams, you know, and they get proceeded to get beat by better teams. So it'll be Peach State and Wheeling nail to championship on July the sixth. To be fair, I don't think I expected this, you know, but it is what it is. I mean, I mean the best game in the AL two have been played by Jersey and Wheeling, you know, to be completely honest with you. But I mean, you know. Maybe Jersey will move somewhere. Definitely don't don't move them down to Trenton. I think we all know, you know, how that has gone over the years. I mean, even the Philadelphia Soul this year, you know, was supposed to play Trenton, they easily died, but that was due to other stuff. Speaking of teams dying, um, Zach Bug, you know, came out and said it was like, yeah, West Texas ain't coming back. Um, and they cease operations, you know, of course, citing you know, Lee Hutton and company as, you know, the guys at fault here for the most part. But then, you know, Bug started to reveal some other stuff like concessions not being given, you know, concession money not being given to West Texas and some other factors, you know. And it, it also boils down really to fans in the stands that also is something that it boils down to never um, never really getting the arena quite full. Looked like Frisco's, to be completely honest with you, about forty to fifty percent full all the time down in Odessa, and there's just nothing to do. And West Texas is another team in Odessa that has failed. So, so the Desert Hawks slash Warbirds, you know, are another team in Odessa that has completely failed yet again. It's like what the third or fourth time. Just stop putting indoor football there in that. Area. It, this is not an area that I have it. I'm just going to be real with you because there's been so many attempts and they've all failed, you know. And then you know, one to three years later, another somebody's going to probably come back and say, "Oh yeah, Odessa, oh yeah." So it's just not really that great of a market either for me personally. That's another thing I feel. You know, the, you know, obviously, you know, the press conference revealed a lot of things. At the AFL, you know, we we already knew, but ultimately, at the end of the day, maybe West Texas should have stayed in the AL. I think that's kind of it for that, you know. Probably should have stayed there. On um, the TAL, the Arena League, Tim Brown's Arena League. Um, should, probably, should probably start calling it Tim Brown's Arena League. You know, Ozarks and Iowa went to double overtime in a thrilling game, and the Kansas City Duluth game just ended with Kansas City getting the one point victory. Oh my goodness, what a game! What a, what both of these games were absolutely amazing. You know, the 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 fact that you know, even though it's six on six, and people were like, "Oh well, this is weird," and yada yada yada, it, whatever. Shut up. Yeah, both of these games were great. <laughs> Especially the Ozarks Iowa game, definitely one of the better games you know this past weekend. 
I, I mean, you know, I was captivated from start to finish, you know, watching this one. Um, the amazement by some of these plays, you know, were just astounding. Uh, but definitely, definitely some good stuff there. Um, I have fell real quick. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. So a couple teams, by the way, have clinched a playoff spot in the IFL. Frisco has clinched. Green Bay has clinched. And, I mean, I, mean, I believe, you know, a couple teams are out at this point. So a couple teams are out, you know. So, yeah, um, you know, I don't have the standings pulled up at this moment, but what I do have is the scores of all the games. I do have the scores of all the games listed here. So I'm um, just running down the line with them real quick, you know. It, it, it's thrilling how awful Jacksonville is this year. It's really thrilling. And I know the Jacksonville fans are going to probably pile on and be about it, but, I mean, it is what it is. You, just, you guys just aren't good this year, getting pounded by the Pirates' run game and everything like that, and then things just not go well, the greatest. They, they just didn't go the greatest at all, you know, only putting up 30 points. Tulsa had to survive Iowa. Green Bay didn't have much of an offense against Quad City. Bay Area barely got by Duke City. Frisco beats Sioux Falls, you know, and, I, and again, people were like, oh, well, Frisco has a great defense. They're inconsistent. What are you talking about? Um, Vegas barely got by Arizona in one of the late games. San Diego also only with a one-point victory. And then the game that ended a few minutes before the duel of game, Northern Arizona and San Antonio in an absolute duel, 74-68, highest scoring IFL game this year. Man, just great games all around. I mean, the plays were spectacular. I've seen some great things yet again this week in the IFL. I mean, again, Green Bay getting stifled by Quad City. I did not expect that at all, you know, the way they've been playing, you know, lately. But they got a nice little roadblock that will definitely help them out, you know, I think, in a way. You know, it was a loss, but it is a loss. Uh, Billings beat Albany on you know the on the silliest of things yet again you know I mean four point play a deuce yeah, you know and some other shenanigans in that game just had me you know just had me tweaking you know and all the Albany guys you know are like oh well the refs yada 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 you had a eleven point lead man you guys had an eleven point lead don't say Oh, well, the refs did this. They didn't call this. And to be fair, I think there was like one play that they'd get called or something like that. But I was not paying attention to this game completely. I thought the game was over. You know, when I flip back over, I'm sitting here like, what in the world just happened here? And then that's exactly what happened. Um, Washington Southwest Kansas was also a great game to the very end. You know, Southwest Kansas had the opportunity to win it, but ultimately Washington got the win with just a little bit of time left. On the other side of things, the other two games were absolute duds. Cedar Rapids had to fill in yet again, so, you know, you know how that went. So they got beat down by Salina and then Wichita. Ah, the fact that they don't have, you know, one side of the net, like one side of the field does not have the nets, but then they were like, oh, well, you know, it was a issue with the, with, the, with the thing, you know, with the net structure. And, you know, yeah, to be fair, it's been kind of hard to watch the Wichita, you know, regulated this year. It hasn't been that fun for them. They've won one game. <laughs> it's not been fun. Has not been fun, but yeah, um, I believe Salina has clinched, Billings and Albany have clinched, so we're just waiting for the other two teams, to, you know. So it would be Orlando, Southwest Kansas, or Nashville that will go to the other two spots. So three teams with two spots, um, yeah. 
Another week of this, another week of indoor football is, you know, down. Um, I don't know why Lee Hutton's back on, on social media anyway. Don't know. And also, Joe McClendon is probably, you know, out there trying to grift. I have seen some stuff about that. So just. FYI, people, Joe McClendon is out there trying to grift using old AFL logos still. Um, got some stuff on that the other day. That was also a thing that happened. And, yeah, the GOATs are still perfect. Kansas City GOATs are still perfect, by the way. Still unbeaten. And the, and the Iowa Woo are still winless. I think, I think that's kind of. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, the TAL is actually pretty good. Pretty good stuff, I think. But yeah, n nothing else for me really to say. I don't really have anything else to say. I'm just kind of rambling here. Um, join me tomorrow night at about 10, 15-ish, 10.30, Central. We talked about the Stanley Cup, PWHL. Um, has some stuff that's been going on. So, yeah, that just join me then, and that'll do it for the month of June, you know, as far as video uploads go. So until tomorrow night, take care, everybody, and have a good one.